So websites like HackerRank and LeadCode are great for practicing for coding interviews. But if you're using those platforms, there are a bunch of mistakes that you could make. I've seen people make these mistakes uh, that I want to caution you about. So make sure you're aware of those possible mistakes and pitfalls and you can plan for it. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five common mistakes that people tend to make and how you can avoid them and why you should avoid them when you're using sites like HackerRank and LeetCode for practicing for coding interviews. So first of all, let me clarify that I think these websites are great, right? HackerRank or LeetCode and all that stuff. They actually have brought about this concept of competitive programming. They, they almost treat coding as a sport, right? You have multiple people playing the coding sport and getting better at it. I think that's awesome. And one of the side effects of this becoming popular is that these kind of questions tend to get asked a lot in interviews. And people also use these platforms to practice for coding interviews and uh, get better at coding, which is perfectly fine, perfectly legit. But because these sites like LeetCode and HackerRank are built with a different purpose, there are a few areas where they don't quite align with your preparation for coding interviews. So I'm going to highlight a bunch of those misalignments and possible pitfalls that you make and um, how you can solve for them, right? So let's start with pitfall number one or mistake number one. When you do a coding challenge on lead code, you will be given a problem, you can read through it, you will be given examples of the problem, you will be given sample test cases, what are the test cases you might have to think about and what is the expected result, and more details about the problem, right? So you can read through the whole thing before you start the problem. This, let me assure you, is very, very, very different from a typical coding interview. In a coding interview, somebody were to give you a problem, they start with one sentence or possibly two sentences. They give you just the basic information. They're not gonna share the details and this is intentionally so. A good interviewer starts with just the basic question and they expect the interviewee to ask questions, okay? All the information is almost definitely not given to you, right? You're expected to identify what those missing information are and then ask the interviewer. Notice this is very different from lead code where everything is given to you. So this actually ends up being a little bit of a problem when you're using lead code for practicing for interviews in a couple of ways. First, when you look at the lead code problem, since everything is handed to you, you're not really tuning that part of your brain where you're examining the problem, trying to find out those gaps and asking questions. You're not practicing for that, right? It's the first problem. And the second problem that this causes is because you might have seen a problem on lead code, when an interviewer asks you the same question, right? They ask you something you've solved in lead code a hundred times and they don't give you all the details and they expect you to ask questions. If you were to say, hey, I know this problem, I've seen this in lead code, so I already have all the answers, that's gonna work in your disadvantage because here's the interviewer expecting you to ask the questions and you have made a bunch of assumptions because you saw a similar problem on lead code. Okay, those two problems are caused because lead code kind of gives you all those details. So here's what I would recommend. First, when you're tackling problems in lead code, start with just the first sentence or the first couple of sentences so that you kind of get a sense for what the problem is, but don't read through the whole problem, okay? Assume that this is an interviewer who's sitting in front of you and asking that question. Don't read through the whole problem and Try and tackle this with the limited knowledge that those first two sentences give you, okay? And in the process, you will uncover that, okay, there is some information missing, all right? Make a list of those questions, all right? Either in your mind or write it down or whatever. Make a list of those questions and then read through the problem and see what, uh, what of those, which of those questions are actually answered. Very likely, the questions that you have made would probably be answered there and you get more information, you're kind of practicing asking questions after an interviewer asks you a question. Or you might discover some details which you hadn't thought of asking, in which case, again, it's gonna be practicing your questions like, hey, this is something that I should have asked. So when, when somebody asks me a question like this, 
in an interview, I need to make sure I clarify this, okay? So this is very important. This typically happens in interviews. You are expected to ask clarifying questions. You are expected to identify what's the missing information that the interviewer hasn't given you when they start out with a problem, okay? So first of all, don't read through the whole lead code problem, right? Read a little bit, try and ask questions before you get into the details. And second, remember what the interviewer asks you in an actual interview might not be the exact lead code question that you might have solved, right? Even if it is, it doesn't matter. You ask those clarifying questions so that you get that information out of the interviewer. Pitfall number two, when you're writing code using lead code, it verifies for accuracy. It verifies for you trying to solve the problem, if you successfully solve the problem or not, right? It's a machine trying to verify your code. So you can write anything you want. You can structure your code however you want. As long as it solves the problem accurately, you're done. But in an interview, when you're whiteboarding or when you're writing a coding interview and you're trying to solve a problem, Accuracy is one of the several things that the interviewer will test you, right? It is not enough if your code is just accurate. There are a bunch of other things that you have to think about. Is your code readable? Is your code something that the interviewer can understand? Are you using proper variable namings, right? I don't use I, J, K, A, B, C variables everywhere. You can do that in lead code and it'll work. But if you do that in front of an interviewer, an experienced interviewer, that's gonna take points away from you, right? You need to write sensible variable names, okay? I've seen this happen so many times in all the interview solutions that I see online, right? You have all these different forums where people say, hey, I got asked this question in an interview, here's my solution, and that solution looks like a mathematical formula. I have no idea what that person is doing, okay? So that kind of a solution, while it might be accurate, and while that would work in a lead code setting, that will not work in an actual interview setting, okay? So even though you're practicing on lead code and the algorithm on lead code won't know the difference, make sure you're naming your variables right. Make sure you're making your code readable. If you have like an expression inside an if condition and you use that expression a bunch of times, give it a proper variable name. Don't try to make it terse, okay? Don't try to save lines. I've also seen people say, hey, my solution takes only two lines. That's great for competitive programming, but that's not true, and that's not gonna be beneficial for you in an interview setting. Right? You wanna make sure your code is readable. Third mistake, and the third difference between an interview setting and a lead code setting. In a lead code setting, you click the submit button just once, okay? You're done with your coding. Nobody cares what you do in the process when you're coding, but when you're done, you click the submit button just once and that's when you're evaluated. You're evaluated on your final output. You can imagine, very much not the case in an interview setting. In an interview setting, you're not evaluated for the final output. You are evaluated for the opposite. You are evaluated for the process that you took to get to that output, okay? So this makes a lot of differences in how you approach things. First, you need to know how to speak out loud. Think aloud is what people say in an interview setting and that's very true and that's not something you would do when you're practicing in lead code, okay? So that's something I would recommend. When you're writing code in lead code, imagine that there is somebody sitting next to you, explain to them what you're doing while you're typing your code, okay? That's that's a perfectly legitimate you know, um, practice, mechanism for practice for an actual interview. But this is something you should do, all right? When you're in an interview, don't just jump into writing your code. I talked about asking questions, but then you also have to verbalize your process and talk it through, okay? So don't think that you're solving lead code. You're not evaluated for the final output, you're evaluated for the process. Difference number four, and kind of a pitfall because of lead code as well. I have seen people who solve problems on lead code compare their percentages, percentage of how fast their program went, how much memory it took. This is something lead code does, right? When you submit a solution to a problem, it tells you your program, your solution was 5% faster than like so much percentile, right? Your, your, your program was in the top 5%, your memory consumption was in the top 10%. It tells you that. 
and this is seductive you want to score more it kind of appeals to you right it makes it competitive and i get the appeal for that and it's super fun to do this super fun to tweak your program and make it score more in that uh, scoring but that's again not something people would care about in an interview setting okay in an interview setting people don't care if your program ran five percent faster than all the other people who submitted their solution to that same question right they won't even know okay so what you need to do in an interview setting is look at the time complexity okay is your program running at o of n o of n square o of log n time complexity is what matters the interviewer is going to expect you to reason about this the interviewer is going to expect you to know what the time complexity of your solution is but does your solution run five percent faster nobody cares okay don't bother about it this is something that you kind of sweat over in lead code right people kind of think about this a lot in lead code but don't do that in an interview setting it of course doesn't make sense in an interview setting so if you're using lead code to prepare for an interview don't care about those things worry about the time complexity and forget about everything else it's it's the readability of your code that matters more than the your code running five percent faster Make sure you're practicing on the whiteboard. Lead code allows you to type out code. This may not be what you would do in an interview. In most interviews, favor whiteboard because it's you know it's a group setting. People are people can look at the whiteboard. An interviewer can ask questions, that kind of stuff. So typically, coding interviews are whiteboard interviews. So not only do you need to know how to solve the problem. You also need to be able to write it on the whiteboard. And if you have been just practicing on the keyboard on lead code, it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to kind of translate that into a whiteboard setting, okay? It's, you're, you're tuned to typing the code. You're not practicing writing. So I would also encourage you to practice writing your code on a piece of paper, right? You don't have to use a whiteboard. Just take a book and a pen and then start writing your code. Uh, there are a bunch of other things that LeetCode provides. I think this is in LeetCode Premium, which allows you to um, see auto completion. Right, you can press a dot, and then it shows you uh, method names or you know member variable names and all that stuff. That again won't help you in an interview setting, right? You don't get auto completion on a whiteboard. So again, I would recommend you to avoid all those things. Thankfully, the auto completion thing is a premium, at least for now. So if you don't get to benefit from that if you're just using a free account anyway. Uh, but if you're using a premium account, don't use it, right? Don't get used to auto completion. We all get used to auto completion in an IDE and that's the reason why uh, interviews are a challenge. So if you have to practice for an interview, let go of auto completion, let go of things like syntax highlighting even. Practice on a simple editor without all those fancy stuff or practice on pen and paper, okay? That's gonna be your best bet to learn how to tackle those same problems in an interview setting. After you've done that, you can probably translate that code into lead code, type that out and then see if it's accurate. But then your thinking process has to be tuned to be able to do that on whiteboard or on pen and paper. I wanna leave one final tip, which is kind of an obvious thing, but I wanna state that anyway. Lead code is about programming and programming only. But when you are in an interview with a person, talking to a person, there are a lot of other things at play. It's not just about your coding skills. It's also about how you talk, how you communicate, how you are listening, right? Listening is also another thing which is not focused upon. It's not just how you talk. It's also about how you listen, how you ask questions, how you're receptive to hints, receptive to criticism and all that stuff. Those actually matter equally, almost as much as your coding skills. So those are things that you wouldn't get on lead code. So these are the five tips plus a bonus tip about doing coding interview practice on lead code and what are the things you need to watch out for because lead code isn't a coding interview and how things are different and how we can plan for them. I hope you found this video helpful. <laughs>